Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our regularly scheduled board meeting. The change of date was of this meeting from uh, August 17th was emailed to the Independent Press, Bloomfield Life, and the Township Clerk of the Township of Bloomfield and posted on the Bloomfield School District website on August 5th, 2021. The location and time of this regular meeting remains in the Media Center of Bloomfield High School with the executive session beginning at 6.30 p.m. and public session at 7.30. Would you all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ms. Cole, may I have a roll call, please? Mr. Anderson. Here. Mr. Berger. Present. Ms. Dudley. Here. Ms. Green. Here. Mr. Heller. Here. Mr. Morse. Ms. Salinas. Here. Vice President Walker. Here. President Fishman. Here. Uh, we are on to number two. Be it resolved, the Bloomfield Board of Education will adjourn into a closed session to discuss items which fall in exception of our open meetings policy and permit the board to have private discussions since it deals with specific exceptions contained in NJSA 10 colon 4 dash. 12B, specifically personnel employment matters affecting a specific perspective or current employee. May I have a motion, please? Motion. Thank you. Can I have a second? second? Thank you, Mr. Anderson. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Aye. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll see you in approximately one hour. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the public session portion of our meeting. Thank you for your patience. I know we were running a couple minutes behind schedule as we had uh, a large number of things to handle in executive session. As we open up, I'm going to uh, take the ability to um, pause our agenda uh, instead of going right into uh, the hearing of the public. First, I'd like to introduce uh, Mike Fitzpatrick from the Department of Health here in Bloomfield. Uh, I don't know if you can see, but he has the phone number listed over there. Um, and then I would like Mr. G to give an opening statement. Uh, the items that he is going to be referring to are being posted currently on uh, the district website for parents to refer to. Uh, as we have done for the past 18 months, Ms. Guo's inbox is open for any emailed questions and uh, the number to call in live will be posted uh, both on Facebook and it is on the agenda as well. Uh, so thank you to our colleagues at WBMA for putting this out live uh, as well as Facebook. And Mr. G, the floor is yours. Thank you, President Fishman. Good evening, everyone. Like all of you, I've been looking forward to the start of a new in-person school year, giving us the opportunity to both build rebuild and expand upon our enormous successes prior to the extraordinary events leading to the lockdown. That said, it is important for all of you to realize that as a local school board, we make our decisions in concert with directives we receive from both the state and federal agencies, particularly the New Jersey State Department of Education and our local health department. At this juncture, I am confident that we will be returning to live classroom instruction in September. But my best advice at this moment is for all of us to be vigilant and flexible as we await potential directives that may alter our planned learning module for the 21-22 school year. I am prepared to share with you everything that I know and toward that goal, I want to touch upon three district areas in order to lessen confusion. One, mitigation measures. Two, our planned educational program. And three, the vaccine. Considering the mandatory nature of the vaccine. It is important to discuss areas within our control as a school board. This is our realm for which we can control and this is mitigation strategy. Beginning in September, masking will be required of all 
staff and students until further notice. Exceptions to this rule will be granted on an individual basis, notably based on a student's medical status and or disability. We will continue other mitigation strategies consistent with this past school year, including daily questionnaires prior to attendance, as well as temperature screenings, reporting and quarantine protocols, all of which will be overseen by our individual building nurses on the direction of our lead school head nurse who will be in regular contact with our local health department. Second, our educational program for now will include live instruction for all pupils. All teaching staff members will be returning to the classroom for live instruction and is expected that all pupils will be present in their respective learning environment. However, I recognize that it is our responsibility as a Board of Education to ensure that all pupils receive an adequate and comprehensive educational program for this upcoming school year. At this juncture, there will be no virtual alternative for pupils absent any regulatory or legal requirement that the Board of Education may have for home or out of school instruction due to a temporary or chronic pupil health condition as confirmed and advised by a licensed physician. In terms of the vaccine, we understand that both the efficacy and the administration of the vaccine on an individual basis is not our jurisdiction as a local Board of Education, but is now a mandate by the Governor. Bloomfield will comply with the Governor's order. The Bloomfield Board of Education will comply with all federal and state mandates as they exist now and to the degree they may change in the future. If you feel frustrated at this juncture, please know that I share your sentiments. My best advice at this time is to stay focused. Continue to heed the good, common sense advice of our health professionals. Stay safe and remain, remain open-minded that any adjustments to the plan that I have shared with you will be made solely with the goal of ensuring that you and your family members continue to stay healthy. This narrative, it can be, uh, was shared on our district website as well as social media, so you can reference it at your convenience. Also with that, you will find another document which identifies specific general practices, masking vaccinations for staff, physical distancing and ventilation, events and activities, meals. There's a summary chart that provides the differences in practices from the 2021 20, school year to the 21-22 school year. And if you have any questions or concern regarding how the practices in this letter will be implemented in your child's school, please contact your building principal. I am confident that we are going to have a successful, exciting opening to our school year, keeping our children and staff safe. Bloomfield is an exceptional community. This Board of Education is committed to our children, to their safety, to their education, to our staff, to all of our employees. We have been very successful for 18 months. We continue that success moving into this school year with excitement, enthusiasm, and being cautious. Thank you for your patience and thank you parents for all your support. Thank you, President. Thank you, Mr. G. Uh, as you've stated, it is already up on the district website. It is also up on social media. Uh, before we opened up to the public comment, Mr. Fitzpatrick, I didn't know if you wanted to say anything to the public uh, before we take any questions. Yes, I most certainly would like to. Uh, I'd like to address the public. Thank you for having me, and uh, I'll just make this uh, brief. 
Uh, you know, just to let you know that uh, we all know by watching the, watching the uh, television, reading newspapers, that case counts are on the rise. But I just want to put it in perspective. Last week's case count in Bloomfield was only two active cases. So that is not a really highly significant number. So I just want individuals and residents not to panic and not to worry that we're having surges like we had you know, 14, 15, 16 months ago. So I think that's number one perspective. The most important things we can all do, and you've heard it several times, is wash your hands, stay socially distant. Actually, wash your face when you wash your hands if you're out and around. Uh, do those kind of simple things. Wear masks when you're in a crowd. Those will help become uh, immunized. That will help also. So we're trying to minimize this as best as possible. And by following the principles that the superintendent just mentioned and the plan that was created, it really does help to reduce the likelihood of transfer within the classroom. And I'm kind of excited this year that we really can have children back in the classroom and have an effective way to teach and educate and at the same time stay safe. So essentially, and now with the governor's uh, requirement, as of yesterday, all pre-K through K through 12 will need to be vaccinated for all personnel in school systems. And last week, it was a uh, mask mandate. So at this point, we have some good tools that we can implement, and uh, we will cooperate as a health department throughout the year, uh, as we have through this past year, to do anything we can do to help assure proper education and at the same time create uh, an atmosphere of safety and a comfort and a helpful environment to the best we can and reasonable in this pandemic. So thank you very much again for uh, allowing me to speak for these few moments. Thank you for being here, Mr. Fitzpatrick. Much appreciated. And thank you for all uh, your help and guidance throughout the last 18 months and as we go into this new school year. If I could ask you just to hang on uh, in case any members of the public have questions directed for you, uh, I'd appreciate that, sir. Be happy to do that. Thank you. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to open up the first hearing of the public. It's going to be agenda and non-agenda items, as we've done in the past, to allow people to speak and then go about their business. Uh, there'll be a maximum of 45 minutes for each uh, speaker. Uh, sorry, the maximum of 45 minutes uh, for public comment. Each speaker is limited to three minutes. Maybe if I could get that right today. Um, and uh, just a reminder, the call-in number is 973-381-7200. When you are instructed, please turn off uh, your sound uh, so we do not have feedback. And then please uh, speak loudly and clearly with your name and address, and then your three minutes will begin. And we're going to start with Mr. Atkinson because he's telling me we have someone on the line. Hi, could you identify? Hi, would you identify yourself for the board? Your Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to open up the first hearing of the public. It's going to be agenda and non agenda items. Could you allow people Hello? to speak? Hello? Hello? Hi, could you uh, turn off the TV or computer? I didn't hear you. Could you turn off your computer? Yes, I can get that right today. Um, and uh, Come on. Yeah, Is that better? Yes, can you tell, tell us your address and address the board? My name is Florence Rolino. My address is 45 Wells Court in Bloomfield. Thank you. Go ahead. My question is that I, the one that I sent to all the members of the Board of Education. I'm very concerned about the Board of Education non uh, health, more or less with the solar panel situation of the town. The last July 20th meeting, I was very outraged when I heard Mr. Goncalves, if I'm pronouncing that right, uh, that uh, it's, he just said it's the township's problem and basically not the Board of Education. And I just want to put my two cents in that there seems to be a disconnect between the Board of Education and the township of Bloomfield. I don't see why we do not cannot embrace the new technologies of the solar panels. The idea that when Mr. Morris answered my email this morning and said that they could use something like uh, plastic on the windows for energy conservation, I suppose, that to me sounds like something from antiquated 1900s or so. And the idea that we should embrace technology when it's, we can save some money by spending a little bit to get the solar panels. 
and then reinvest the money into the Board of Education that the part of the Board of Education would would find. And then I just understand that the solar panels will be much to do with the scientific education and the environmental education for the students at Bloomfield. It teaches them the personal environmental footprint and how this action helps the community at large, uh, like especially the offsetting of carbon emissions. That's all I have to say is that I just think there is a disconnect between the Board of Education and the township when it comes to saving money. And I think the Board of Education should be t tantamount on, on the cutting edge with the township to get solar panels. Thank you. We appreciate your call. Uh, the Board of Education is always uh, looking for ways to uh, improve sustainability and to be efficient and to make sure that we save money and do what's in the best interest of Fine. our children and the and community. I understand that solar panels have much to do with the science of education and the environmental education for the students at Bloomfield. It teaches them the personal environmental footprint and how this action helps the community. Uh, as I was saying, uh, the Board of Education and the uh, Mayor and Town Council are always looking for ways to work together uh, for the best interest of our children and the best interest of all the community members. We'll continue working with the, uh, with the township. They uh, have initially started this process. We have been a participant in it, uh, and we will continue to work with the township. Thank you. Is there another person? Yeah. Hello? Hi, could you give us your address to address the board? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Can you tell us okay, let me just, yes, uh, my name is Drew Pittenger. I'm a lifelong resident of uh, Bloomfield. Uh, currently, I live at 49 Club Street. Um, I have three children that attend Emerson Elementary School. They are in sixth grade, third grade, and first grade. Before I make my statement, I have a few questions I hope all of you can address after my statement. <laughs> firstly, I would like to know, I would like, firstly, sorry, my daughter. Firstly, I would like to know what improvements have been made to them or school in terms of ventilation and airflow. Second, how many mass breaks will student get throughout the day? And third, will teachers and all staff be required to wear masks at the same time as the students? I ask these questions because there has been a lack of communication since the start of the pandemic with this Board of Education. I have emailed the entire Board of Education, the Assistant Superintendent, and the Superintendent numerous times and not have received one single email response. I ask that you make math optional for students within the Bloomfield School District. I ask that you formally send a letter to Governor Murphy asking to make the mandate optional. I encourage all parents who feel the same way to do the same and request from the Board of Education that they email Governor Murphy. A reminder that the Board of Education works for the citizens of Bloomfield and not the other way around. I am extremely concerned that masking my children for close to seven hours a day will have a long-term negative effect on their health. Who in their right mind, COVID or no COVID, thinks this is an acceptable way to treat children or any human? It is a form of child abuse. If masks are so effective, why were they never previously worn during any flu season or under any other major outbreak of some sorts previously? It's simple, they don't work. If they did work, we would, not, we would not be entering year two of this pandemic. My oldest child suffers from severe seasonal allergies, making the mask hard for her to breathe. She also suffers from anxiety and panic attacks. She is so terrified to go to school because she is afraid if she coughs or sneezes in class, people will look at her differently and think she is sick. Try having an attack in school trying to breathe. Well, she can't. Our youngest came home last year, mind you, with a half a day from severe heat exhaustion, crying and begging not to return to school. This is instilling unnecessary fields in our children. And at what point does their mental health become a concern? During virtual learning, too many times YouTube videos were placed in front of my child. This is not education. As we all know, face-to-face -face instruction, uh, along with their teachers and fellow classmates, is the best. 
Everyone talks about the physical health of children, who at this point in time, as stated on the CDC website, 12 and under has a survival rate of 99.7%. But people fail to consider how important their mental health is. The American Academy of Pediatrics first stated that children look at their parents for facial expressions for reassurance and safety. The CDC then conducted a study in which 90,000 students across 169 were studied, uh, districts were studied. The results? Social distancing, hybrid models, classroom barriers, HEPA filters, and student masking showed no specific, statistically significant benefit. Thank you, sir. Your three minutes scenario. is up. Thank you, sir, yeah. for your time. Yeah, well, you guys started late, so I'm going to keep going here. No, sir, uh, I have other people that have comments. So as I stated, each person is limited to three minutes. Uh, I can have the uh, superintendent and assistant superintendent answer your three questions, but your three minutes is up, sir. Uh, Mr. G, Mr. Flores, do you, do you want to respond to uh, the ventilation, mask breaks, and teachers wearing masks? Okay. At this point, the um, state of New Jersey is under a mandate that all school employees and all students will be wearing masks when we begin school uh, this coming September. Uh, so that will be happening. In terms of ventilation, it seems like uh, in your statement, a lot of the things that we've done, you're disputing, uh, but seem to be helpful for, uh, for students as we know it moving forward. Uh, I do appreciate your concern. We don't want any of our students to be distressed with anything that we're doing moving forward, so we're very sensitive to that. Uh, we have also put out two documents that you can reference tonight uh, on social media or our website that can answer uh, the remainder and maybe more questions that you may have. Thank you. Any other callers? Go ahead. Hi, can you hear me? Hello? Yeah. Yes, could you tell your address and then address the board? Uh, yes. Um, 201 Wachung Avenue. Thank you. Go ahead. Okay. Um, yeah, I um, just a, it's a little bit concerning as a parent um, to uh, basically know that there's not going to be any hybrid learning, especially because these uh, children are very small. Um, we can't expect them to keep their mask on all the time during the class. They spread germs like, you know, wildflower flower, flowers. And, you know, we have this, the, the, the consequences of possibly having these germs brought back home on a weekly basis. So the parents that, you know, want to have their kids come to school and, you know, uh, you know they, 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 they don't want to wear masks, that's fine. But the parents that are more concerned about the health of their family and these kids passing germs back and forth, because like I said, kids, they're, they're, they're the most germiest people on the planet. We can't really expect them to kind of keep this in check. Um, so, I mean, there has to be an option for us to do hybrid learning or, you know, to make it available. Because as I'm watching the video of you guys, you guys are social distancing amongst yourself, yourselves right now. And then you're going to expect to have all these children packed up in, in, in the class like sardines. It makes no sense to me. So, again, as a parent, I'm just very concerned that, there's no option. You guys have to at least consider that for the parents that are concerned and just to kind of get a, a contain on this uh, pandemic that we have going on right now. Whether you're vaccinated or not, I really don't care. It's more of a health and a safety issue for everyone. And, and also I have one more thing. As far as the nursing staff, is it just gonna be one nurse that you guys are, are having on staff? Or is it gonna be multiple nurses uh, uh, for you know, these situations? Because again, we, we don't know how this is going to act. I'm watching a lot of my friends who have their kids in Georgia who on a weekly basis are coming in contact with more cases, COVID cases. It's, it, it, it just, again, it's just kind of scary to know that in September that we're not even considering hybrid learning um, for the parents that are a little bit more concerned that again, this could become a problem in this area, so. Thank you, sir, for calling in and for your concerns, Mr. G and uh, Mr. Flores, if you would like to talk about uh, the hybrid learning and the governor's orders and our nursing staff. Just to the first point, um, thank you for voicing your concerns. We do reference uh, social distancing in the two documents that we released today, uh, tonight, 
both on social media and the website, so you could reference that in regards to social distancing. The hybrid learning option, right now we're under a mandate from the governor of New Jersey and the Department of Education to provide full day of in-person instruction for all students. That is not a local decision, that's a mandate from the governor of New Jersey, and we are in compliance with that, and we plan on being in compliance with that starting on September 8th. In regards to the nurses, uh, we have a nurse at every site. We have multiple nurses at the middle school and high school. We have designated a district nurse to be a liaison with the local health department that we met much success with in the hybrid setting of last year. Thank you. You have another one? Yeah. Okay. Hi, can you hear me? Hello. Hi, yeah, could you state your name and address for the board? Yes. Um, my name is um, Jane Kalis, and I live at 500 Broughton Avenue in Bloomfield. Thank you. Go ahead. Yes, uh, first of all, I like, want to wish all the students and staff and uh, teachers and you, all of you, a successful fall. Um, uh, as, school, as school starts. Okay, um, here's my uh, statement. At Monday night's town council meeting on August 23rd, yesterday, the agenda included a report on putting solar panels on public buildings and schools. The town administrator said Greener by Design was hired to determine which buildings are suitable for solar, and they found there are nine schools and two public buildings. He said this project has been held up because the Board of Ed is not interested in putting solar panels on schools. That you are doing other things like weatherizing and boilers, which Mr. Gunkov stated at the July 20th school board meeting, as well as that solar was a town project, not the Board of Education's. So after some discussion, the mayor and Councilwoman Davis said they will meet with you to find out why you can't do both. So, Mr. Gunkals, will you please tell the public the answer to their question, especially since Greener by Design's report says Bloomfield could save $2.9 million in energy costs with a 15-year solar inst installation contract. And especially since Greener by Design's report says Bloomfield could save 2.9 First of all, Jane, thank you for... Um the well wishes for a, a good school year for all of us. I thank you for that, and I thank you for your question. Uh, just to provide some clarity, this project was a lead project of the town. Uh, they are the ones that initiated the RFP, and they are the ones that paid for the services for Greener by Design. Uh, we were participants when asked by the uh, town because we want to be good community members, and uh, we want to look into uh, whatever may make uh, our lives better in terms of sustainability uh, or what's in the best interest of children and what's financially feasible. Uh, we did look at the reports from Green and Design and we were not pleased with the results that they had shared with us. Uh, we are open to meeting with the mayor and Councilwoman Davis to discuss any of these topics moving forward and I do appreciate your call tonight. Yes, hello. Hi, yeah, could you state your name and address for the board? My name is Veronica. I live at Patton Drive in Bloomfield. Um, I have a fifth grader, um, and my concern is that there's going to be no virtual option because she can't get vaccinated yet, and I can't wait until she can because I'm absolutely going to do it as soon as I can. But her classroom has, at a minimum, 28 kids, and it's not possible and how small the classrooms are for them to social distance. And um, I'm extremely concerned about it. it. It scares me with the cases and kids going up so much in places that the schools are open completely. And I know that I just heard you guys say it's a mandate from the state. You guys don't really have control over it. But maybe if we could write something or talk to someone or if you could send me to the right place to to say something to someone about my concerns, 
to maybe get a virtual option or a hybrid option or something going. Um, because I, I just, I don't think that the ventilation and everything in her school is up to date or proper for what it needs to be with the pandemic going on. And again, they, it's not possible for them to social distance. There's just not enough space. There's too many kids. Thank you, Veronica, for that for that statement. Um, I could certainly appreciate that you sound like a concerned parent for sure. You are correct in regards to the mandate from the governor uh, that's coming directly out of his office in conjunction with the Department of Education. So I would direct you if you feel otherwise, that would be the avenue to go down. In regards to, I believe she referenced Fairview School. Was that the reference of school? Um, we have very raw numbers that I have confidentially sitting in front of me, and I'm not sure that 28 number right now is accurate, but with that said, um, that class size in regards to the spacing, we are working with building administration who each building has a pandemic response team that consists of staff members and various other stakeholders within the school. They're working diligently and have been since the end of last school year when the governor made it very clear that we'll be going to school all day in person. So they're currently working on those plans and I can assure you to the best of our abilities, we will be spacing out, being very creative. It might not be the classrooms that uh, we are used to with all the things in the rooms and the pleasantries that you may see, but we will ensure that we are socially distanced to the best of our abilities in all of our schools using every uh, utilization that we have in regards to that and every resource. Thank you. Just one other thing I want to add for parents that are listening. Um, one of the things this Board of Education has been committed to for a very long time is small class size, especially at our elementary schools. And we've been able to uh, achieve that because of uh, good financing and uh, good decision making. That small class size, which is excellent for instruction, also now serves a dual purpose in terms of this pandemic and what it's brought to us. Uh, so that is going to be beneficial to us as we move forward. And situations where classes are large, we are working with building principals to see what creative uh, ideas we can come up with to make sure that we keep all our children safe. We're very aware that all of our parents want the very best for their children, and we want the same. Hold on, Mr. Hackinson, hold on. It's okay. You can answer. Hi. Just hold, hold my on. name is Let's. Jasmine Pinheiro, and I live in um, Pine Street. Hi, could you wait one my second? question. Hi, what, sure, sure. What? Hang on. Hang on one second. Sorry. President Fishman, I think something that's missing uh, from tonight that's important to highlight. Board of Ed. Uh, without, I apologize for interrupting the caller from Veronica's statements. The following. Uh, Mr. Goncalves said that this is evolving, and I think part of the municipal school board's responsibility is to comply with the hierarchical structure that we have good, bad, or indifferent. Politics notwithstanding, political parties not relevant. And at that point, that doesn't presuppose that anyone in this room feels strongly against a virtual option. Indeed, I think there are many people who think there are aspects of the past school year that worked well. That said, we have obligations uh, to follow the regulations and mandates through the legislative process in terms of new laws or orders from the governor in terms of executive uh, recommendations. Any pupil who has a chronic health condition as documented by a licensed allopathic or osteopathic physician is entitled to an alternate mode of learning, and that's important to note. Mr. Concavas noted that in his statement and that doesn't require a lobbying effort that doesn't require a phone call to trenton that is bloomfield's legal responsibility and we will comply and the, the last point is to the degree it's helpful and it frames any conversations or questions from new callers is mr goncalves also states this is an evolving landscape we report to what we know based on what we're directed as of 15 minutes after 8 o'clock on the 24th, and that very well can change. So that is all the information that we have at the juncture. To the degree, uh, pessimistically, the pandemic with the variants provide more of a level of pause in terms of closure. 
uh, after Labor Day, this guidance may be significantly changed. So we will be reporting back and updating at least the superintendent or Mr. Flora as well on September 9th. But the caveat is any student with a medical condition a certified by a physician will be entitled to an alternative learning module and none of that has changed by absence of coronavirus, the pandemic, or the governor's order. Thank you, President Fishman. Thank you. Go, would you state your name and address again, please? Sure. My name is Jasmine Pinheiro, and I live on Pine Street. Um, my question to the board was, is there, for instance, if let's say tomorrow the executive orders do change and we happen to go back to online or hybrid, is there a new and improved hybrid or online plan in place? Because last year for my little one, the online was way too long. And the hybrid for the middle schooler, she only attended one day out of the week. So is there something in place that's a little bit improved compared to last year's? I think as Mr. DeToli just, just had mentioned, this is obviously evolving. Um, behind the scenes, we are working for contingency plans should anything get in the way. But as Superintendent Consalves said in the beginning of today's meeting, we are ready, prepared, and confident to open in-person full-day instruction starting September 8th. For that, but if an executive order does change, let's say Monday morning he decides to change his mind and he goes back to hybrid or online learning, is there something in place different than what we were doing last year? Because last year for our little ones, it wasn't effective at all. You had a, a, you know, first graders and second graders online for eight hours that was way too long and they were struggling. That is my question. And in the hybrid that was in place, my daughter went to school one day out of the week for two hours. That really was in hybrid. I think quite honestly, it would be dependent upon what the executive order said in regards to what restrictions that would currently be in place in regards to social distancing, in regards to building capacities and percentages of occupancy. I think all those things would factor in. But I again repeat myself that we have and will continue to work on contingency plans should anything arise from the governor's office that changes the course of action. Okay, thank you. Hi, can you hear me? Hello? 973, can you hear me? Hi, can you hear me? Hello? Yes. Hi, could you state your name and address for the board, please? Sure. My name is Greg Lombardi of 10 Curtis Street, Bloomfield, New Jersey. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, fully aware of the unfortunate decision of the governor for this uh, doing away with hybrid learning, um, the district does have cases where kids prior, long, long prior to uh, COVID, had what they called at-home learning for kids who couldn't go to school for one reason or another, whether it was extreme anxiety, uh, they had a broken leg for X amount of time, whatever it was. Um, and again, realizing that you folks don't have this power, but it makes absolutely no sense to eliminate something that served a purpose it's it's in, in a minor way it's kind of like some of the some of the stores some of the stores are eliminating the little plastic screen that helped the people not spread the germs i mean it didn't it didn't really kill anybody to to leave those screens up i don't understand the disadvantage to students who, and, and there are some, a bunch of students who actually learn better from hybrid learning than they would in, in a situation where things are, are, are bad. And the last part is, is, to the best of my knowledge, every single school throughout the nation that has opened up has ended up with many, many COVID cases among the staff, deaths among the teachers, students, 
uh, be, uh, be coming, coming down with COVID. Uh, also, these are people who are going to bring things home. Kids can bring their diseases home to their parents, their grandparents. Uh, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm baffled. And I, I, I was just wondering, even though you're governed by the governor's decision, is anybody boosting uh, hybrid learning or are they just saying, we're going to do what the governor wants? Thank you. Greg, it's always good to hear your voice, and uh, we appreciate your concerns. Uh, you make uh, a lot of valid points. Uh, at this point, Greg, we're, we're under a mandate uh, that we need to obey uh, and to follow, and I think will help our students. The issue of high bread, uh, if we were given our uh, druthers to uh, have some influence on, uh, we would share uh, what, what that is and, and how we feel about it, but we weren't given that opportunity, unfortunately. Uh, so we will continue to service all our students in the best possible manner that we can. We're confident that we will. Uh, and we will watch this day by day and see what changes happen. And we're prepared to make changes as those changes occur. Do you guys want to just discuss, he brought up the fact of um, at-home learning and how that would take place and what that would look like for the, the medically fragile that Nicholas talked about? Um, because he brings up a point and it did not disappear. So I don't know if Mr. Detoli or Mr. Flores wants to elaborate on that. That, that part is still there. It did not go away. Um, so, Hi, Greg. Uh, thank you for your service to the district, and particularly your years of service to CPAC. It doesn't go unrecognized. Um, one, I, I think Mr. Flores was a little um, uh, conservative in his last comment with the caller. I think Joe and his supervisors have spent an extraordinary amount of time from uh, very little direction of March of 2020. I spent very, very little time, if any, so I can't take any of this credit, but I'm complimenting Mr. Flores, his team, under Sal's direction. From March of 2020, with no direction from the county or the state, Bloomfield engaged in a hybrid plan, and to the last caller's question, I think spent a lot of quality time over many, many months listening to parent guardian feedback and refining that plan. So although Mr. Flores was guarded in his comments. I do believe the virtual learning model that sits in abeyance at the moment is significantly approved by stakeholder input support, that of our supervisors, principals, and our parents, and is a much better model than was first rolled out on an emergency basis. Um, and that said, Greg, I think there are many people, as I alluded to with an earlier caller, who have found that the virtual option had worked for families for some of the enumerated reasons that you brought up on this phone call. But as I suggested to Veronica earlier, the provision for home instruction, whether through a disciplinary event or through a chronic health condition exists. It's a statutory and regulatory responsibility of a board of education and it'll be provided via content area 7 through 12 or generalized for a period of time with certified teachers in a negotiated setting. That's at a physician certification or in an alternative situation uh, upon action by the Board of Education that removes a pupil. That ha remains unchanged and to the degree that was part of your question, uh, that aspect and that alternative mechanism should be distinguished from the lack of a virtual model that does not extinguish the Board of Education's responsibility for an alternative setting based on the representation and certification of a physician. I'm going to take a break. You have nobody. I'm going to go over to Ms. Guo because I know she has a few uh, emails that have come in. Ms. Guo. Sure. Um, this first one is from Susan Harriet, and uh, she's a parent from Brookdale, and she has a two, uh, she has two rising third graders and one rising fifth grader. Her comment is follows: Where and when will elementary kids be eating lunch? Can we pick them up and take them home for lunch, so they're not spending? 
they, so they are spending less time with their mask on inside the school. In the spring, we noticed that some elementary classrooms only had one window open very slightly. Can the school administration enforce that every available window be open as much as possible for the entire school day? The last part is, given the Delta variant, will a remote option be offered now? If not, is there a threshold for school or and community cases that will trigger a switch to remote learning? Thank you for your comments, Ms. Harriet. Um, I'll go one by one. I believe you had three questions within that comment. Uh, lunch, as we noted before, and in the documents we released tonight, will be spaced out to the best of our abilities. Building principals will be getting information out to families as we approach the se September 8th start date. Uh, yes, we encourage if you can and are able to sign your child out properly for lunch, you're welcome to do that. Just please be in communication with your building principal and your child's teacher, children's teachers. We are, I think the second point in regards to windows, we are encouraging all staff to open windows as much as possible throughout the year, especially in the fall and the warmer months in the spring. And again, to reiterate, a general remote option is not available as per the governor's most recent order at this point. Thank you. Next one is from Lauren Benick. Dear Superintendent Goncalves and Board of Education members, thank you for taking my comment and question. My children attended in-person hybrid school in the spring, then summer boost and re recreation center camp this summer. Thank you so much for the summer boost program. My children benefit from the program beyond academic support. Just being in school with teachers and other students was tremendous for their rusty social skills, their mental health and physical health. Thanks to everyone, Everyday PE. Thank you to all the teachers, principal, and educators who made, who made summer boost possible. Based on the experiences we had in the spring and over the summer, I hope to encourage you to please continue to have snack time and lunch time outside whenever possible and for as long as possible this fall. I wonder if the tents that were put out, put up for camp will remain in use and if additional tents can be utilized on the blacktop. I know many parents were put at ease knowing that the children were outside during eating time in the spring and summer. Additionally, I think if there's ever a time to utilize our outside spaces, now is the time. The benefits for being outside whenever possible cannot be overstated, especially when considering how successful it was in the spring and summer and how it can aid our continued success this fall. Thank you. Thank you for uh, the nice comments about the summer program. We're glad that everything went well for your child and the other children in that program. We are certainly going to try to utilize our outside uh, areas as much as possible uh, in the good weather in the fall, uh, even in the winter if it's uh, appropriate, and uh, certainly in the spring. So we do appreciate your comments. Thank you. This question is from Megan Barry. What is the plan for the elementary school's lunch period? Will the schools be getting tents and tables to outdoor lunch? And also, will the students and or staff be civilians tested for COVID? All staff by the governor's order will be uh, expected to take the vaccine or test uh, for COVID once or twice a week prior to October 18th. Uh, so uh, that, that will be in effect. Uh, the lunch programs that will happen throughout the district will be a normal school day and a normal uh, lunch uh, with the exception, obviously, of trying to uh, social distance our students. They will be wearing masks. Uh, taking advantage of outside 
uh, facilities whenever uh, whenever possible. Thank you. Next question is from Joshua Trojak. Um, can you please share the district's what's, what the district's doing to address mental health issue during this school year? Thanks, Josh, for your for your question. Um, first, we are going to continue with our award-winning programs in regards to Dylan's Wings of Change and the Sandy Hook Promise, of which we've been nationally recognized for, and we're really excited to build upon that program district-wide. There's a number of other of district initiatives that will be coming forth and information will be coming out, one with a little sneak preview involving puppets at the elementary level that have been proven to be really effective in the area of SEL learning initiatives. So more information will be coming out. But um, again, we'll be building upon our award-winning programs that we already have in place, as well as adding new programs in that we really think the children will be excited about. So this email is a follow-up question from Ms. Harriet. Uh, she asked, can lunch be taken outdoor on nice days to reduce uh, danger to children and reduce mask time? Which I think Mr. Goncalves said. Yes, that's the it's plan. Like that. Yeah. Um, that covers what I have so far. Hi, can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Hi, yeah, could you state your name? Yes, hello. Hi, could you state your name and address for the board? Yes, it's Ted Glick, 500 Broden Avenue. Thank you. Yeah. Should I go ahead? Yeah, go ahead. Turn off your computer if you want. Okay. Um, yeah, well, first I want to um, wish all of you and the parents and the staff and the students, um, you know, that all goes as well as possible. I know it's a really anxious time uh, all over for everybody, but particularly uh, with going into the new school year. So I really do wish everybody well and that it works out as well as possible in uh, difficult circumstances. Um, I, am, uh, I, I am calling in to speak about the solar panel issue, which I have been involved with uh, in Bloomfield. Um, for, for five or more years, I remember I met with Mr. Uh, Goncalves uh, about five and a half years ago to talk about this issue. And um, here we are, we're still trying to get solar panels on the roofs of schools and town buildings as part of, um, uh, for many reasons, to save money. That's one of them. Another reason is because of this climate emergency that is only getting worse and worse and worse, what we're seeing uh, all over the world, including here in our country, the fires, the droughts in the West, and the, the major storms and all the rest. So um, there, this is the right thing to do. It's just the right thing to do. Um, I guess my, I, I want to just uh, ask a question of um, Joe Fishman. Um, it, it seems like uh, everybody uh, there uh, is in agreement that you all don't want to put solar panels on the roofs of schools for reasons that I do not understand. I just don't understand. So I'd like to ask, is, is that the position of the board? Has the board voted and said we don't want solar panels on school roofs? Hi, Mr. Glick. Is there any other questions before I address this one? Is that the position of the board? Mr. Glick? Hi, is there any other question? Did we, we lost him? No, I just muted him. Oh. Um, so, Mr. Glick, uh, first of all, thank you for calling. Thank you for uh, bringing up this topic. I, b I believe that we talked to uh, Jane uh, just a few minutes ago. The board members, when they vote, vote in public. There are no votes that happen behind the scenes. So if we had voted on solar panels, you would see it in public. Uh, I agree with Mr. G. I think we need more information from the study that was done from the township and having a conversation with the council people as well as the mayor uh, in terms of what is best for our buildings. Um, 
in terms of what they showed us, uh, it wasn't looking very promising with what we have seen so far. Maybe there's another report that we have yet to see. Um, and that's why we're going to have further discussion with the mayor and council. Uh, until that point, I don't think uh, I'd like to speculate on what eight other people wanted to, to talk about in terms of that, but all votes that happen uh, for the Board of Ed happen in public. Okay, seeing no other things, we will close the hearing of the public. Uh, for those of you that are still watching, if you have further comments, we do have a second section at the end uh, in the same format. We are going to move on to number five reports. Uh, Mr. G, superintendent report is up first. Thank you, President Fishman. Obviously, this is going to be very quick. Uh, my letter uh, and additional information regarding school opening has been disseminated out to the public uh, and shared with the Board of Education in a meeting that's taken place. We're excited about the opening of the school year. We do understand that parents are very concerned. These are your children. We completely understand that. We want to provide an environment for your children to be as safe as possible. We want to work with you. Questions that you may have to your particular buildings, please address with your uh, 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 building principals. We encourage you to do that. They're available uh, by email, by phone. Uh, and they look forward to hearing from you. And I know that working together, all of us for the best interest of the children are going to ensure that we're going to have a very successful school year. So thank you, President Fishman. Thank you, Mr. G. Uh, as I move on to the present report, first I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Fitzpatrick. I know he had to go. Uh, he had another meeting, but I want to thank him and all the members of the Department of uh, Health here in Bluefield, the mayor and council, for their guidance and uh, support during these times, especially as we open a new school year. Uh, to my colleagues uh, uh, as a teacher, as well as the parents and the kids, I hope you're enjoying the last few minutes uh, of summer break and getting the most out of them. Uh, teachers first, kids uh, have a little bit extra time, so I hope you're enjoying every last moment uh, and every bit of sunshine out and spending time with your family before uh, beginning another academic year. I'd like to congratulate everybody who made our summer learning pos uh, possible. Uh, it was a, quite an endeavor in a short amount of time, so thank you to the administration and everybody else uh, who was a part, about it, a part of it across the board. It was very successful for the first time offered at all our buildings, uh, so hopefully that's something that we will continue in the future and build on that success. Secondly, uh, like Mr. G just said, I've asked this to, of, of my colleagues, I've asked this of the community, i asked this of the parents. Uh, we've done it over the past 18 months as a family, a Bloomfield community, a Bengal family. And I ask you to pack your patience, just as I have many times before over the last 18 months. I tell you that as a teacher, as a taxpayer in Bloomfield, as are the rest of the people sitting here. Uh, it may not be 100% perfect or what you want individually for your child, but our job here is to follow the guidance of the governor, his office, any federal mandates, any county mandates, and down, down to the township. Uh, there are certain things that we are allowed to do, and there are certain things that have absolutely no wiggle room. So I ask you as we open this to, uh, like Mr. G said, take your questions and suggestions and comments. Take them to your building principal first, maybe your child's teacher, maybe you're seeing something that we don't. Uh, and we encourage you to follow that. It will get to us. Uh, the, they also all have emails and phones that you can call them on a regular basis. When you address the board, uh, you will not get nine individual responses. Usually we pass it along to the administration. They take phone calls and uh, emails back. That's guidance from New Jersey School Boards Association so that there are not nine different answers going in different directions and then we have confusion. So don't think that we're not reading your emails or we are ignoring you. That is not the case. Um, it's just we have to follow certain policies and procedures and protocols to make sure that we continue the success that we have built on uh, moving forward. Um, also keep in mind, this is a very fluid situation. Whatever we tell you tonight could change tomorrow morning in a heartbeat if the governor decides to have a press conference. Um, and just your level of frustration is the same as ours because we have to pivot on the dime for 1,000 employees and approximately 6,000 students. Um, 
So please understand that we are doing our best to be as transparent as possible, get the information out as early and, and as often as possible. Uh, and while it could be frustrating, please understand it's as frustrating for us as it is for you because we have to follow those mandates. I encourage you to stay safe. Like Mr. Fitzpatrick said, wear your mask, wash your hands, wash your face, social distance, do the right thing. Uh, the quicker we can do that, hopefully the quicker we can put an end to this. And uh, we are here to help you in any way, shape or form. You will see us uh, either virtually or in person at your home and school meetings, however they choose to be. One of us will be at each meeting. Feel free to reach out. We are here for you, but I need you just to remember that we are stuck between a rock and a hard place. We would love to be able to do everything that you ask of us, but the governor's office tells us no. So just pack your patience with us, guys. We're, we're walking through this one step at a time with you. And uh, we've built success over the last 18 months. And I am very confident that that's going to happen starting in September, both for our staff, our students, and our families. So I thank you for that. Uh, again, enjoy the last few minutes of the summertime. Um, and I'm excited. I'm excited to see my students. I know our teachers here are very excited to see theirs, uh, our bus drivers, our secretaries, everybody top to bottom. Um, so I want to be excited. I want the kids have a great time. I want them to be safe. Um, so thank you very much. With that being said, I'm going to close my report and go on to the approval of the minutes. Uh, it is number six on your agenda. May I have a motion, please? Motion. Thank you, Ms. Salinas. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Any discussion on the approval of the minutes, number six on your agenda? Ms. Gold, may I have a roll call, please? Mr. Anderson. Abstain. Mr. Berger. Yes. Ms. Dudley. Yes. Ms. Green. Yes. Mr. Heller. Yes. Ms. Salinas. Yes. Vice President Walker. Abstain. President Fishman. Yes. We are on to number seven, the curriculum and instruction package. Mr. Berger, the floor is yours. Thank you, President Fishman. Uh, just a, a message to the public that uh, the Board of Education has adopted a bend but don't break stance. We refuse to let COVID-19 win in our district. We're on a pursuit a relentless pursuit to correct any academic um, ramifications of the virus and with all of the health issues aside we concentrated on student achievement in our uh, BOE curriculum committee meeting and let me share the minutes with you our attendees were myself Mr. Anderson Mr. Morse President Fishman and our assistant superintendent Mr. Flores we discussed and we're moving today on professional development plan for 21-22. Also our district mentoring plan for 21-22. You will notice that there are many curriculum guides that are available for board members to see before they vote on them. Um, the administration has promised even though everything with COVID and the governor that all of our curriculum guides are going to be ready by the first day of school. Thank you very much. We discussed sustainable New Jersey. We also have a policy for first read, which a lot of our board members and committee uh, committees are concerned about with our CTEs. Thank you for um, your work on that. We had an update on our summer learning. Uh, Mr. Flores provided an update on the conclusion of all of our summer learning programs. He also provided insight into the upcoming after school programs in the 21-22 school year. We thank our teachers so much our certificated and non-certificated staff because public school business, uh, districts are a people's business where people on one side are dealing with people on the other side and we really appreciate all the hard work that they're doing. We, think, we know we have the best staff. We also discussed some uh, recognition that we garnered from the um, race card project which is we're going to get a presentation a little further along. Thank you to the administration for additional transparency on the spending on the ESSER 3 money. Also, a, uh, a final drawing of the Foley Field House uh, was provided to the board, and we are looking at the location of the plaque. We will let the community know as soon as that has been decided. Uh, the proposed special education administration reorganization, which we are very excited about, 
uh, was discussed. We have some interim director, supervisor, and transition person. And finally, colleagues, committee members discussed the men uh, committee members mentioned the possibility of shade grants that have been made available to the district. The administration is looking further into these opportunities. There hasn't been shade behind Bloomfield schools or in front of Bloomfield schools for 150 years. The shade will provide uh, locations for possible lunch outside, possible inclement weather before school and after school, really cool selfie spots for our students. Thank you, administration, for considering it. And you know, the community will all be behind it because one of the, one of the things you really hear as a board member is uh, strategies on how to find the shade behind the school. And we really, we, we, if we get a chance to solve that, that would be terrific. And I would like to make a motion, President Fishman, to move curriculum instruction items 7A through 7G. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Uh, just before I open up to discussion, I, I'm impressed that you uh, know what it looked like 150 years ago and that you know <laughs> about selfie poses, so that's pretty impressive. Uh, anybody have any discussion on the curriculum and instruction package? Yep. I, I can't resist when 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 Mr. Berger decides to throw shade. It's it's really it's impressive, um, but I did want to just highlight uh, one point that I think uh, was was brought over a little quickly um, because of some of the comments we've had tonight. It is really impressive that the district continues to pursue um, sustainability opportunities, and and I think it's it, you know I know there's a lot of conversation about solar and some of the things that that some of the benefits that that may provide um, but i think that the district has consistently worked through curriculum through facilities through through all of the different steps um, to keep sustainability in mind in the way that we pursue education and the way that we operate so i, I want to applaud that i know there'll be more opportunities to talk about that but i don't think we should gloss over that tonight the district did receive notification of um, specific certification from Sustainable New Jersey that we'll be presenting officially uh, at the September 21st meeting. There'll be a presentation from Supervisor Luke Capello in regards to the distinction that we received this past couple weeks. That's your teaser for the um, September meeting? I didn't want to let it all out yet. <laughs> <laughs> Any big, other big discussion? Big news to follow. There you go. Ms. Guam, I have a roll call, please. Mr. Anderson. Yes. Mr. Berger. Yes. Ms. Dudley. Yes. Ms. Green. Yes. Mr. Heller. Yes. Ms. Salinas. Yes. Vice President Walker. Yes. President Fishman. Yes. We are on to number eight on your agenda, finance and facility. I will turn the floor over to Mrs. Salinas. Thank you, President Fishman. Our committee met Wednesday, August 18. We met through Google Meet. President was myself, Vice President Walker, Ms. Dudley, President Fishman, Ms. Guo, and Mr. Skazava. Mr. Skazava provided updates on the following projects, Forest Glen and Franklin roof replacements. There is a delay in the metal coping edging material until September. The administration will work with the contractor to ensure safety of our students and staff while making deliveries and working on installing the metal coping while schools are in session. Demarest exterior brick repairs. The contractor is substantially completed with the masonry restoration work. A punch list walkthrough was conducted. Approximately 8,200 will be drawn down from the contract allowance for additional areas that need to be repaired. The BMS security camera upgrades. RFP is working on indoor camera work on the second floor and work schedules will be after hours when school opens. Ms. Guo discussed the following resolutions with the committee members, submission of the FY22 ESEA, which is the Elementary and Secondary Education Act to the Department of Education for approval, drill construction company, payment application number 12, final of 31,857 and 97 cents, Value construction payment application number three in the amount of three hundred and forty five thousand three hundred and ninety seven and twenty cents Spartan construction payment application four in the amount of one hundred and six thousand five hundred and 
574.05, an RFP solutions, telecommunication systems maintenance contract. It's the same maintenance contract in prior year. Ms. Guo discussed the following items with the committee. The ARP ESSER 3, 20% of the grant funding will be used to address learning loss, which includes after school programs, summer programs, and ELL Saturday programs. The remaining funds will be used to upgrade HVAC with AC and window replacements. And finally, Foley Field House. The final draft of the Field House drawing was shared with the committee for comments. Our meeting was adjourned at 3.50. I would like a motion to move 8A through 8M. Thank you, President Fishman. Motion. Thank you, Mr. Berger. Mr. Anderson, you want to be a second instead? Thank you, Dora. Thank you. Uh, discussion on finance and facility. Ms. Bacow, may I have a uh, roll call, please? Mr. Anderson. Yes. Mr. Berger. Yes. Ms. Dudley. Yes. Ms. Green. Yes. Mr. Heller. Yes. Ms. Salinas. Yes. Vice President Walker. Yes. President, President Fishman. Sorry. Yes. <coughs> We are on to number nine in your agenda, the personnel and management package. Uh, Mr. Heller, the floor is yours. Thank you, President Fishman. Tonight's agenda items include the typical resignations, retirements, rescindments or adjustments, reappointments, appointments, change of leaves of absence, transfers, adjustments, extra compensation, degree changes, substitutes, and home instruction approval. A bit heartfelt thank you to those who have served the district um, and we're sorry to see you go. Uh, we could extend that to all of the people who are on there, but we want to thank Miss Regina for her years of service um, in many different capacities, most recently as the director of special services. We also welcome tonight um, Miss Abishan and Miss Rear in new respective um, positions to take up the helm from Ms. Regina's departure. The Personnel and Management Committee met on Thursday, August 19th. The full committee was in attendance. Mr. Dottoli on behalf of the administration, Board Member Green, President Fishman, and I as chair. We reviewed the personnel notes that are on the agenda tonight, including um, specific stipended positions related to various positions in the district. The special education um, department, uh, Mr. Dottoli briefed the committee on the organization of the department given Ms. Regina's departure. We have on the agenda tonight policies for first read. Those were discussed by the um, committee, most notably how we had in June approved um, by first and second reading policy 2312 class size and that is being adjusted again tonight. I believe that the board is doing the right thing um, by bringing the oversight for class size back from the middle school and high school leadership to the superintendent's office. We had a couple items that came to us um, that Ms., um, Mr. Berger and Ms. Salinas have briefed us on, specifically the AERP, ESSER fund um, and how those funds are going to be used by the district and the Foley Field House um, project as well. Finally, we talked about um, back to school logistics uh, relative to Mr. Goncalves's um, report this evening and his letter to the community. And with that, I would like to move agenda items 9A through 9M. Second. Thank you, Mr. Heller. Mr. Anderson, discussion on the personnel and management package. Ms. Guo, may I have a roll call, please? Mr. Anderson. Mr. Yes. Anderson, thank you. Mr. Berger. Yes. Ms. Dudley. Yes. Ms. Green. Yes. Mr. Heller. Yes. Ms. Salinas. Yes. 
Vice President Walker. Yes. President Fishman. Yes. We are out now on to uh, policies and regulations. Um, may I have a motion for 10A and 10B? Motion. Thank you, Mr. Heller. A second? second. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Second. Discussion on uh, policies and regulations, first and second read policies. Seeing none, Ms. Guo, may I have a roll call, please? Mr. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Berger? Yes. Ms. Dudley? Yes. Ms. Green? Yes. Mr. Heller? Yes. Ms. Salinas? Yes. Vice President Walker? Yes. President Fishman? Yes. We are on number 11, the second hearing of the public. It says non-agenda items, but we have opened it up just as we have the first. There will be a maximum of 45 minutes for public comment. Each speaker is limited to three minutes. Uh, remember, the call-in number is 973-381-7200. When you're asked to state your name and address, we kindly ask you to mute whatever device you are listening to us on so we do not get feedback uh, as we proceed. Ms. Guo's inbox is also open. Do you have any more emails? Yes, I have one. Should I start? Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is from Megan Berry. She had a question, second part of the question that uh, wasn't addressed. Uh, the question was, uh, uh, civilian, civilians testing is where when regular COVID test, testing takes place throughout the year randomly for students and staff that are not symptomatic. It has been done in other districts, including New York City. Surveillance testing would be for all students and staff, not just unvaccinated staff. Is there any plan in place for something like this? We are not uh, instituting any uh, student testing uh, of any sort. Uh, so let me be clear about that. Uh, in terms of staff, the governor's mandate that was just uh, passed with the mandatory vaccine uh, and those individuals who uh, are not vaccinated uh, and getting tested, but that's uh, that's adults and uh, teaching staff members and non-certified staff members of the school district. Uh, seeing no other callers or no other emails, I'm going to close the second hearing of the public. Uh, and thank the people who have called in and uh, or written in with their comments, questions, and concerns. We do appreciate it. Um, and we are uh, going to take everything that you have questioned us about uh, back to committee and under advisement uh, as we move forward in open school. So I thank you for that. Uh, we are on to number 12, uh, business. First, uh, delegate and ad hoc committee reports. Seeing none, we'll go to uh, business, new business, old business, or information items. Thank you, President Fishman. Just um, what is our timetable with regard to board and district goal setting for the 2021-2022 school year? We have reached out to Charlene Peterson from New Jersey School Boards to attend Vicki the September 9th meeting. Yes, yeah. and I'm just confirming that um, she should be good. Waiting for final confirmation. Thank you. Yep. I, have, I have three items um, that are kind of all over the map, so bear with me for a second. First off, I want to um, give just a quick shout out to um, Eastside Mags, who provided some donations to Franklin School recently. Um, it's always great to have local businesses uh, providing, you know, resources to us. And I think our business community has done a great job of continuing to reach out when there's opportunities like that. So I wanted to say a quick thank you to that. Um, second, our superintendent who's running away, I just wanted to take a second to say congratulations to the Essex County Superintendent of the Year. I was unfortunately not here last last month, or, so I wanted to just say say congrats to Sal and and do that publicly. So, yeah, I, I know I was, I, we could. <laughs> it was perfect, Sal. Well done, but but I appreciate that. So, um, the last thing, and th this one is actually a more serious note. Um, 
I do want to just highlight to my fellow board members um, some of the some of the points that are coming up um, through committee and that we're also seeing in the press um, in regards to budgeting. Um, I know that in committee we we reviewed some of the funding that's coming through from the state in new sources, and there there is clearly a trend that's happening um, both at the federal and state level to redirect funding sources towards uh, COVID specific needs. Um, but that is also potentially at the detriment of other programs. And I know as a board in the past, we've worked carefully to protect many programs um, over the years that, that have needed extra sources of funding along the way. Um, and I think we've done a really fantastic job of doing that consistently. I just wanna highlight that I think the next six months to a year, we're gonna have to be extra diligent in that area. And I know Ms. Guo has been doing an outstanding job of highlighting those issues to us as they come. So um, I just, you know, let's just keep our eye on the ball. And I, I wanna say thanks to, particularly to um, Chair Jessica Salinas and and to uh, Vicky Go for really, you know, keeping on top of this stuff and keeping us in front of it. So thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? So it's time for everybody's favorite time of the meeting. It's called adjournment. May I have a motion? Please? Motion. Thank you, Second. Mr. Berger. Thank you, Mr. Heller. All in favor? Aye. We'll see you guys in a couple Aye. weeks. Have a great night. Stay safe. <laughs>